Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dark down for a while 2023, you guys, and I'm winging it! Hi, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. That's the website, the Dork Forest, if you like a determiner. Dorkforest.com also works. JackieCation.com has all of my stand-up information. Like, it has videos, it has pictures, it has links to this podcast and to my other podcast with Lori Kilmartin. It has a merch store that has Dork Forest t-shirts. It has all of my stand-up merch and all of my CDs and DVDs. So, that's what you know about websites. There's an opportunity because uh, we're in the new year here that you can donate to the Dork Forest. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have uh, anything really set up, though I understand you can set up on PayPal a monthly if you wanted to. Uh, you could donate and uh, be of uh, to support the show. This is the 17th season, the 17th year I've been putting this stuff out. It's free, but if you have money and would like to throw me some money, boy, howdy. Uh, uh, there's a PayPal, the, and there is at my web, at my email address, actually, Jackie at JackieCation.com, which you can also email me and tell me how much you're enjoying the show. You can also do Venmo if you'd like, which is just Jackie Cation. No hyphen, all one word, picture of this, this person, me, and then... Um, I think that's it. I think I have Zell, but it's too complicated. Other than that, let's do the credits. Patrick Brady, still in, fixing the audio all these years later. Give it up to Patrick Brady. That's what a lot of your donations support, by the way, because I like to uh, share the wealth. And then um, Bill Mose, he does the websites. And Mike Rickberg wrote and sang that song composed and sang that song with his wife now, Sarah. And uh, at the end, he sings uh, the Mexican hat dance, which is always fun. Anyway, I'm sure there's more to it. There's a band camp that has a bunch. It has like a, a, a stand-up storytelling album that was never released. It's uh, There's also a, a bunch of live episodes that many of them are free. There were 200 episodes that were not pre-recorded, and I sort of culled through those, and I pulled like 17 of the best ones. There's an album collection of that, 17 Hours of Dork Forest. If you run through all of the episodes, go to bandcamp.com, Dork Forest, or Google those words, and you'll find it. Anyway, there's probably more. I can't remember any of it, but you're doing great. Feel free to enjoy the show. Hi, Jackie Cation here. Uh, welcome, Rangers of the Dork Forest. Uh, we are in the Dork Forest with, uh, you know who's touching up, touching up the lips? Let's do this. <laughs> it's Lisa. Lisa, right? Yes. Right? Traeger? Yes, perfect. Yes. I did it. It's Lisa Traeger, but it's spelled Liza, L-I-Z-A, in my I head. Know. No, I not went, in I, your head only. Everyone's head. It's spelled like Liza. <laughs> I have a long Soviet name. Oh, so it's like that's why it's spelled like that. So I'm Yelizaveta. Was it spelled while you were in a bread line? Was your mom in a bread line? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so Soviet. I was going to have a different name, and then my grandmother died a few days before I was born, so I took her name. Do you know what my Armenian name is? What? Hi Ganoush. Hi Ganoush. It isn't cute. okay. It isn't okay. I like uh, it. It's uh, uh, my brothers call me that when they want to be uh, jackasses. Uh, but uh, Anush in Armenian means sweet. Haiganush is, uh, I don't know, might mean crack. I have no idea what it means. Uh, but we used to call my my great aunt, whose name was Haiganush, who I was named after, um, Helen. So okay. that, that that's the weird uh, English to Armenian uh, scam on that. Uh, but here it is, folks. It's Lisa Traeger. And Traeger is spelled T-R-E-Y-G-E-R. Two E's, right? Yeah. And your Instagram is at Glitter Cheese. Glitter Cheese. So get in on it. Stand-up comic. Really funny. Just watched a vid. That's right. Also has a podcast called 
that's messed up an SVU podcast. Let me tell you something about SVU. I don't like it. I don't like that they made it. I think it's gross. But uh, congratulations on being willing to discuss it at length. You don't go to sleep to sex crimes every night? No, no. (laughs) I'm already blocking. I'm blocking any weird touches I've had over my the decades. (laughs) No, it really is sick. But our community, we we just fall asleep to it. And our at our live shows, we meet all these boyfriends and husbands of our listeners that are like, yeah, now I fall have to fall asleep to your voices or to horrific crimes every night they meet these women and then that's their new night routine is murder murder and sex crimes so lisa your co-host what's her name kara clank it's kara clank you guys she's been on the program i believe she talked about summer camp (laughs) oh my uh, god she loves camp we were on the road in boston and she's like listen we're gonna have a little camp reunion after the show come with me i go of course 45 campers (laughs) classic they all classic work new there. england bullshit they're married to each other they're yeah. direct it was wild it's spooky is what it is is what it is and it ought to be an episode of svu <laughs> but here's the thing you do live episodes of them and you're gonna do one this week uh june 25th i think you said at comedy works downtown and then you're gonna do stand-up on the 26th and comedy works of course is in denver and june of 2023 that's the year we're all in folks and then you're doing a live one in los angeles on the 28th and if you go to at glitter 29th 29th on the 29th (laughs) and if you go to at glitter cheese on instagram the correct info will be there very glamorous now here we go uh lisa here we go we're gonna talk about something i've never even fucking heard of this is a dorkdom i don't even know what it is scandoval scandoval baby scandoval ah the pronunciation more on the end let's hear yeah. it what is it it's um like i've always i've wanted to do this podcast for so long and now like i know why i had to wait and it's because <laughs> i get to talk about scandoval <laughs> So that's really lucky. The reason it's called that is because there's a man on Vanderpump Rules, which is a reality show on Bravo television. And it's a spinoff of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So Lisa Vanderpump um, was a housewife of the Beverly Hills and she owned restaurants in West Hollywood. And she told Andy Cohen, an executive producer, you know, the leader of Bravo. Okay. She goes, these waitresses and bartenders are sexy they're on cocaine, they're incestuous, and they're out of control. It should be a show. And now we're 10 seasons in. It's one of the best what? reality shows ever. And this Many season, seasons. Yes. And this season is unprecedented television because Tom Sandoval, and that's why it's called Scandoval, um, he had an eight-month-long affair with his girlfriend Ariana's best friend Raquel. And it was... <laughs> revealed and so when you're watching this 10th season you are seeing lies deceit and an affair take place that they thought that they were going to be able to keep secret they stopped filming in september march she finds something on his phone and they're such giving people they borrowed a camera crew from a different show immediately three days after this affair is like revealed and they were ariana and tom have been in a relationship for nine years they they but but tom was having an affair with somebody else with her best friend, he was fucking their friend in their home while Ariana was at her grandmother's funeral. Oh my it's God. Sick. It's And sick. they're so interested in living their lives on television that when it was revealed, they went and got a camera crew. Correct. And they're like, people are going to want to see this. This is a cash cow. Let's get with it. And that's exactly what happened. Well, not only that kind of a cash cow, and then they filmed the reunion three weeks later. Um, <laughs> but Ariana has now made over a million dollars in endorsement deals, advertisements. She's going to be on Dancing with the Stars. She's in a Lifetime movie, Bloomingdale's, Duracell, Raising Canes, um, Wait, is she Lay's the one that potato was cheated chips. A, was she the one that was cheated upon or yes. the cheater? Okay, so she was she was the lady who was in what she thought was a monogamous relationship. Correct. She said to herself, I I shouldn't sleep with anybody else. I'm with this guy. We're together. And that guy said, I'm in a polygamous relationship where I can go stick my wiener wherever I want. Is that 
but just with the one woman, eight months, and they were, fr- they were all three of them were tight, like super close friends. That is why this season has been heartbreaking because that, like the rest of the friend group, it keeps telling Ariana, like, this is weird. Something's going on. What's going on? We're catching them in lies. And Ariana, the whole season continues. These are my best friends. I love them. I love my boyfriend. I trust him. You guys need to stop. Leave her alone. There's nothing you can say that will make me not trust her. She has been nothing but lovely and delightful. She is a tr- like, so that's what makes it wild. And then un- right in front of her, they're making jokes and lying and talking about it. And, and this is on the previous season, essentially. No, like, did you get to see this in real time, kind of? Not Yeah, so the season aired. Um, they filmed last year. They ended in September 2022. It premiered in the spring. And then in March is when the fair got realized, blown up in the magazines. They film extra stuff. And then <laughs> I think they re-edited some of the later episodes with maybe... You know, it is a like, reality show, but yeah. Right. Could you go back and look at the last season and go, oh, look how close they're standing? Or could you go, like, could you take like a lice comb yes. and just go through it and look for things? It's the little looks he gives her. It's the <sighs> hugs. It's the lies. It's the, and then they were seen at the Abbey at one in the morning. And so Katie, who hates him, was like, so at the Abbey at 1 a.m. and he gets defensive immediately, you know, like I do What's wonder. What's the Abbey? Um, it's the gay bar in West Hollywood. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I but, live here, but I don't know anything. <laughs> so thank I you. I do wonder if the affair was not realized what this season would have been, what we would have thought. And what we would have thought is all these other girls that were suspicious or dumb bitches. They're annoying. Like they're just, you know, we could like, I don't just know if jealous. we would have seen it. Yeah. Wow. And it gets sicker, Jackie, because so there's two Toms. Tom Sandoval's with Ariana. He's the cheater. Then there's Tom Schwartz and Katie Maloney, and they've been together for 12 years. They were married and they just got divorced. And Tom Schwartz is best friends with Sandoval. And all Katie asked Tom Schwartz was just don't fuck in in the friend group. Like, go on dates, have sex with whoever. Just like if we want to continue being friends, I need you to not fuck one of our friends. What he does is he creates a fake makeout relationship with Raquel, the other woman, to take the heat off of his friend Sandoval. So he is a pawn that was being used by the cheater and he had such low respect for his wife. That's the whole part of their marriage that sucks is like. And did you see that for 10 years? Yes, but Katie was such a wet blanket and Tom Ugh. has such a charming vibe. I think people uh, in the know knew, but for years I was watching and I was younger and I was like, Katie's so annoying. Katie's a wet blanket. Katie's this and that. And now when you think about it, it's like, holy shit, he never put her first. He put prioritized every single other person. He threw a beer on her during this show. He would what? say horrific things to her. I mean, their relationship was awful, but he goes and not only makes out with Raquel for no reason, but is protect. And so what's wild is Ariana was Tom Schwartz's like groomsman. They are friends too. And Tom Schwartz is helping Sandoval get away with the affair on camera. And he knows it. Tom yes. Schwartz knows that Sandoval is having a scandal. Yes, okay. because wow. they are going on secret trips together that have then been realized and they are setting up fake scenarios and conversations in the season because Sandoval didn't just want to cheat. He didn't want to just break up with her. He want he likes to have the moral high ground. He's a narcissist. So, he's also creating a storyline that Ariana's a nag. She doesn't fuck him. She's not a good girlfriend. And Schwartz is helping him do it. They're having fake conversations, setting Ariana up, trying to spin it. And he knows the whole time that Sandoval is fucking Raquel. This is insane. Yes. And, and it's supposedly <laughs> reality. Like these it are is. real people. It is real people that they, they need help. They need help. Well, Ariana is in therapy and you can really see it in the reunion because she's very like vicious, but direct and very like she's been open with her mental health struggles. So like she's in therapy. There's one person. And and the thing is, is if you come back for the reunion, even if you have been taught in therapy that you have to let all of this stuff go, but you need the paycheck or you want the paycheck or you, you know, and there's also ego involved, right? Where she's like, 
I bet you I could run circles around these two idiots. And like, because the thing is, is I don't know if you've had any therapy, but all of my therapy has been like, you have to let go of your anger. You have to just not hang out with these people. You have to just move on. Right. Well, yeah, she cut him out because she told Schwartz, she goes, anyone that's friends with him is not my friend. You're cut out. But she also is angry. Like in the reunion, she is. Of course, she's just angry. at them. Yeah, she's right. Pretty well, but the thing is, is and, and then but for good television. Yeah. Screw your therapist. You got to make it. You, you got to say everything you've ever thought that you wanted to say. You're the worst. You're an idiot. And but he never put like. I don't, do you, when you watch a reality show like this, uh, Lisa, are you learning about what you don't want in a boyfriend? What are you learning? I don't know It's if it's for learning. I don't know <laughs> if it's for learning. Is it just fraud and shade or shade and Freud or whatever the fuck that's called? Is it just you know, your psych that you're not them? Andy Cohen's whole like goal of what he's created with the housewives and everything was real life soap opera right which is what my mother-in-law watches young and the restless and bold and the beautiful every day and that's exactly what this sounds like yeah but this sounds like it moves faster no they will it depends what season and which production company some of the (laughs) cities um have different production companies and that does affect the way they produce and make the show. So there's, and are you boring? Are you real? Like Beverly Hills, they hide a lot because they're all actors, you know, they're all Beverly Hills type people, but like Atlanta, it moves faster. They will say you're a terrible mother. And then the next day it'll be fine. Beverly Hills, they'll have one fight that lasts eight seasons, eight episodes. And then like, it also wow. depends if you can forgive or forget or not, because there's characters like Teresa, um, Judice, Judy Che and Jersey. She'll bring up stuff from 10 years ago. And there's lots of flashbacks. Is it still, is it, and they, and the editors cut in flashbacks? Yes. It's the best. Holy, and they're shady. that catalog. And they're shady. Like a, a wife will be, or one of the housewives will be like, I would never say that. And then they'll cut to her saying that, you know? <laughs> Uh, and that's why those editors need to be in the WGA because they, they are creating uh, the show. There's no writers, right? I mean, it's all just editors. No. And the editors and how long is- deserve every award. The, the editing of this season with the affair, it's top notch. It's really incredible. It's really okay. Incredible. So it's has it been the same people for, for 10 years? The main core, yes. Some people have been fired for racism. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Course. You would have thought that would have been dramatic. Uh, so, and then some people have gone in and out. Some people quit. Some people are boring. Um, some people get added season three and have been on, but the core group have been together since the beginning. And, and how old were they when? Okay. You're going to like this. So, Tom <laughs> Sandoval cheated on his ex girlfriend season one with Ariana, his now girlfriend of nine years that he cheated on. But we all sided with them because Kristen was crazy, but he was gaslighting her, lying to her, creating shit. But we didn't know it was the beginning. So now 10 seasons later to see. And and are they are they clipping that those flashbacks into the season? Because the language is the same. He says the exact same things. It's all a lie. But I've been there where you think you have something special. And that's what Ariana said. She goes, I just thought this was the love of my life, my life partner. I was going to live my whole life with him. So, on camera yeah she legit thought like she forgave him a lot like she was down to work because that's what she kept saying she goes fine if we have intimacy issues you go to therapy or you break up you don't fuck my friend you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah um, yeah and so because he even there is lies where like he lies to Andy Cohen's face. Oh, and Tom Schwartz and Sandoval, they didn't get their timelines correct. So he, Sandoval lied to Andy Cohen. was like, I didn't, this didn't start till January. And then Schwartz in the reunion goes, I found out in August. And Sandoval goes, August. And everyone's like, oh, you didn't get your timeline straightened up, did you? You know, they're just yeah. liars. Liars. Oh my God. But it's okay, been so the crew. How- and then some people are lunatics. So like they get fired, but- What's great about this is they're actually friends because a lot of shows try to recreate it, but like, yeah, they were friends. They've been friends for 15 years, this friend group. So where did they come from and how old were they when this started? 
early twenties and now they're in their late thirties, um, 40. Wow. Yeah. So okay. they were in their twenties. And they're 20s. from California? Yeah, yeah. Like Sheena's from Azusa. No, Ariana's <laughs> from Florida. I think Tom's, Tom's from this, Tom is from St. Louis and he took his mistress home for Christmas and no Sandoval and Sandoval's family knew and they've known Ariana for nine years, did not tell her. And they still have not reached out to her once. And like, she did never wanted children. She's not into marriage. Mm -hmm. And he kept saying he wants kids. And for him, they were going to do embryos. So while he's fucking her best friend, they're talking about like making embryos. Like her freezing her eggs or something. Yes. Okay. Wow. I hope she did freeze her eggs in case she does want to do it with someone else who isn't an idiot or a monster. What? So they're She's in their early 20s. New. Okay. And how long, where did they, I seriously, I don't want to be the one who goes to Wikipedia. I do it. Some episodes I do, but maybe, you know, maybe, you know, where did they meet? Why did they come into this show as friends? How do you, how do you know that? Have you been watching it the whole time? Oh, of course. Yeah, multiple times. Oh, my God. Hilarious. So yeah. for 10 years, you've been watching this program. How many episodes per season? Um, I don't really 120? know. Because, <laughs> no, I wish. I've been watching Bravo, though, since 2006. Like, I watched okay. the first episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County, and that yeah. was it. And I've, I, I've gone in and out with certain franchises or seasons, but I have consistently been watching um the, the his andy cohen's programming since 2006 okay well good andy cohen and his children's braces thank you uh <laughs> so yeah what um okay so 10 years ago it's 2023 so in 2013 these uh how many were there eight sure yeah uh, let's say eight let's say, let's say five to 10 of them yeah. uh, come in. They're going to do a show and it's called, and it's called Sandoval then? No, it's called Vanderpump Rules. So it's Vander- Lisa Vanderpump's it- restaurants. Okay. And, and it was a spinoff of that. Mm-hmm. And they were all waiters together or waitresses. Well, Jackie, you're going to love this because it was seamless. <laughs> like we remember the premiere because the episode of Beverly Hills rolled straight into Vanderpump because Sheena, one of the Vanderpump waitresses, she was fucking one of the housewives, Brandy Glanville's husbands behind her back, Eddie Cibrian. Oh so- my God. Brandy sits down and having a conversation with Sheena about the cheating. Sheena then gets up, puts on her apron and starts just seamlessly waitressing at the restaurant. And that was how the show. Oh my birth. God. That is amazing. That, you know what that is? That's really good filmmaking is what yeah. that is. That's amazing. So they're waiters and waitresses and, and bartenders and whatever. They work at the Vanderpump restaurants. They know each other at this. They work together and they're friends. And, but they're all coked up and alcoholics. And, and, but they all screw each other. And we're like, oh, we're making a show. And now 10 years later, because they all had, they live in Los Angeles. They all have other dreams. They're like, no, but I'm an actor, you know, but I'm a musician. No, but I'm a writer. No, but I'm a stage actor. I'm operatic, whatever. And now it is 10 years later. Have any of these people broke out? Like I, you said that Ariana is going to be on a lifetime show movie. Yeah. Um, Sheena has a song called good is gold and it is incredible. (laughs) And that's another ad. So Ariana, this girl, Lala and Sheena are in an Uber gold ad where they change the words of good is gold for Uber. And it's the best song. It's like so good. Um, (laughs) None of, no, all of them are just reality stars. Lala Kent um, mayor was with a guy and had a child with Randall Emmett. And you might have seen there's a documentary about him on Hulu right now because he's a producer that is being su- was a horrific human. And he is now like he owed money to 50 Cent. And he I haven't finished the documentary about him, but the L.A. Times wrote a huge expose on him casting couch shit like theft of money okay. and he was taking advantage of Bruce Willis when Bruce was already ill. OK, and his whole production company was like paying aging action stars a few million dollars for short scenes in movies that were bad, but made millions overseas. And so that's how, and then he ended up producing the Irishman, but because he started being on Vanderpump rules, 
Um, a lot of that's what's crazy about Bravo. All these criminals come on and then they're in jail. So there's a real housewives of Salt Lake City serving six years right now. Um, oh my God. What for? Yeah. She was doing like she was defrauding the elderly with marketing scams with direct marketing. Okay. Scams. okay. So just basic. They're just thieves. They're not yeah. murderers or um, <laughs> like any like elaborate criminals. They're literally petty thieves and they're opportunists and they're narcissists um, and they're narcissists or, or at least do narcissistic things. And um, this seems like it's its own culture, right? This reality, like the Bravo do they all know each other? Yeah. So the now shows. Yeah. So now there's a thing called Bravo con. It was two years in New York. It's going to be in Vegas this year. And okay. it's basically like props scenes. Like they recreate scenes. You can take photos of it's meet and greets. It's a whole convention panels live. Right. Watch what happens. Live shows. They all, they do all know each other and meet and do stuff together. And then there's like cross beefs because they're all shit talkers they all know how to right, make right. fucking television and so <laughs> they do it's know like each other. it's like wrestling but without the yes. with, with without the choreography 100%. Um, and then oh, some of them date and fuck throughout the franchises as well and so um Our, there's cross contamination and love okay and so the of, of the eight people or whatever that are been on this thing the whole time are they um, are the, do, do they have kids? Did any of them marry? Such a good question. And also I forgot one of them is DJ James Kennedy and he is DJ and he just bought a home. So we're really proud of him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so a couple of years ago, a lot of them, yeah, they're, yeah, they're in their thirties. So a bunch of them are now married, have little babies that are, you know, under three years old and they all moved and bought homes in Valley village. Okay. Okay. And they bought <laughs> Uh, so they all each have eight hundred thousand dollars to buy a two bedroom, <laughs> yeah, uh, or three million dollars to buy something decent sized, and because uh, Valley Village, I lived at Valley Village back in the 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 late nineteen hundreds, and uh, let me tell you something, uh, it was pretty dodgy. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't it it wasn't bad. I I liked it, but I knew that it wasn't fancy at any time, way, shape, or form. But now, and we made fun of the fact that they called themselves Valley Village <laughs> because it was Van Nuys. It's just Van Nuys. Oh. And then they split off from Valley from Van Nuys and said, we're going to be Valley Village. And you're like, oh, are you? Okay. It's like NoHo. NoHo, they've been trying to make that North Hollywood being called NoHo for, I believe, 40 years. I was told that it was a long time that they were working on it. It's finally taking. Uh, but that's because of population explosion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a real quick break for uh, what I like to call an advertisement. We're back. To my knowledge, there was an ad right there. So uh, don't forget to do the thing that I told you to do because it's an ad for something nice. Anyway, we're here with Lisa Traeger. Lisa Traeger is spelled Liza, L-I-Z-A. Uh, and it's Traeger, T-R-E-Y-G-E-R. And it's at Glitter Cheese uh, on the Instagram. And um, she does stand-up comedy, has a podcast uh, about uh, um, Law & Order SVU. What is it called? Making That's Messed Up. That's messed up because it's SVU because it's the sexual violence thing, right? Yeah, and Ice T's character says that's messed up a lot in the earlier seasons, and so oh, there it's you go. a little nod to Ice T as well. <laughs> I saw him live once in the middle nineties playing uh, w playing heavy metal with his heavy metal uh, body rap count group. Yes, uh, how was the music? It? Is uh, loud, loud. It was loud, and it was raining. It was one of the very first uh, Jane's Addiction headlined. And uh, it was a festival and it was like one of those, it's still going on. I don't know. Uh, it's wasted on me. And as all rangers of the dork forest know, I shouldn't be the one to get to see things because other people would appreciate them more. Uh, I saw Miles Davis play the trumpet once in uh, in the late 80s. Uh, wow. wow, what a waste. Anyway, somebody could would really like this. <laughs> I was, I mean, I like the trumpet. What are the uh, things you do you do like to engage in? Oh, I enjoy uh, reading a great deal. Okay. Uh, I like going out to lunch. Uh, I enjoy having a cup of coffee. I like going for a walk. But there's um, been nothing like an event that you were like, thank God I was there. Oh, I like to travel a fair amount. So, I mean, I like to go. I went to the Resistance Museum in Paris that I was a little obsessed with. 
And uh, that was very cool. It was where uh, the Germans bombed. It was a bomb shelter and and the French resistance hung out there fighting the Nazis. Wow. And um, yeah, I'm somebody's dad. I'm essentially, <laughs> yes. uh, I, I enjoy the History Channel a great deal. <laughs> well, you're going to so, love this because of the yes, Real Housewives please. of Atlanta. Yes. Um, Portia, her father, or her grandfather was a very famous civil rights leader. She comes from a very esteemed um, Black family who does a lot for civil rights. She, during like, BLM, you know, got arrested a few times, but on the show, they took like a historical trip and she thought the Underground Railroad was a train. Oh, choo choo. Yeah. Okay. So and she's she was not- like, where are the train track? Like she legit was like thinking there's, <laughs> there was going to be a train. So that was like That's, a beautiful moment for us. That is a beautiful <laughs> moment. That is truly disappointing for her family yeah. going not out loud, not out loud. <laughs> When we were all children, we thought there was a train, but no, no, you're in your thirties. Please don't think there's a train. It was just uh, the fact that people had to be handed off. There's a little bit of that. That was the train. Okay. Uh, that That is hilarious. So Real Housewives. So we're still talking uh, Scan- Scandival. There we go. Scandival. Do you think that it's bled into written television? Do you think that people who oh. who watch it ever think i'm gonna steal that and put it in an episode of svu or bones i'm actually very disappointed that s because svu the whole thing is like based on real crimes and that's our podcast we talk about an episode and the true crime that it's based on and so how do you find out the true crime do they say no there's a fan wiki or sometimes it's obvious and then kara clank who i work with is a I don't know how to describe it, a maniac. So there's an Excel spreadsheet. Everything's researched. There's <laughs> highlighted. There's tabs. So it's a lot of her. Um, okay, so family. she's doing a lot of research. And well, so she can triangulate what the crime was and yeah, where it might have been. It's obvious. You're like, this is clearly about Michael Jackson, you know, or something like that. Oh, like sometimes okay. it's very obvious. Like, and then sometimes it's really tiny crimes. And, you know, I have to get newspaper memberships to can- the Kansas Chronicle or whatever, the Wichita Eagle, shit like that, um, to do the like hard research. But I'm actually really disappointed that SVU has still not done a real housewife crime yet because they- there's been a few crimes. What are the crimes that have been in the real housewives? So, like I said, Jen Shaw's in prison for like um, the marketing stuff. Also a woman on the Salt Lake city franchise. She is the leader of like a church cult and she married her step grandfather to, to take the church away from her grandmother. So her mother wouldn't have it. So I think there's an issue there. Yeah. Um, Then on the real housewives of Beverly Hills, Erica Jane is married, was married to Tom Girardi, who is an old man lawyer who, I don't know if you've seen the movie Aaron Brockovich, but that character, that lawyer character is, Tom is who it's based on. Okay. So he does class action giant suits for people. Um, The LA Times, again, did an expose where he legit was stealing money from plane crash, um, like families, burn victims. He was stealing millions from his um, clients. No. But he's the head of the bar association. He gives money to the cops. Her son is a cop. So he got away with this forever. Um, right. But Erica Jane is claiming like, I didn't know. I didn't know. And so her storyline has been tough. But the courts <laughs> have um, acquitted her. So we'll go off that, I guess. But she was horrible. She was just like, I don't care about the victims. I care about me wearing diamonds like uh, eating right, caviar right. pie, crying that she has to now live in a three bedroom <laughs> home. So those were some of the crimes. DC only lasted one season. Cause I don't know if you remember this during the Obama administration where a couple snuck into the like white house for a party. What? And one of them was a housewife on DC. And so Bravo, they were going to get in litigation. So Bravo was like, we'll just cancel it. But they were the couple that snuck into, I don't know if it was the correspondence, like something in the white house and one of the women on the DC housewives, her husband was a photographer for Obama. So then she was not allowed to the Christmas party and stuff because it was a security <laughs> risk. Cause this, these, this lunatic snuck in. Um, 
So those are the main, oh, and then Teresa Judice and her husband, they went, they both went to jail because he was a slumlord and he was falsifying documents and Teresa signed the documents. So they served, he served time, then got deported to Italy. And then she served her time. Two questions. One, are these people better looking than normal people? They're beautiful. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, But through uh, like uh, camera angles, uh, workout clothing, this type of thing. Or um, I think you're naturally... missing a huge one. I think you're missing plastic surgery and you're and, fun oh, and plastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and also plastic surgery. And um, so that's why they're drawn in, right? They're like, hey, look at this beautiful person who wants to be on it. Like, because they must have auditions, right? So yeah, they also want like, if you're connected in some way, who your husband is, and they want wealth, like they do want, um, but you know, in 08 and stuff, like, there were some housewives that lost their houses. There's been divorces that have devastated families. The, the programming. So. <laughs> it's devastated the program. Let's really admit what what Andy what's his face is well, saying. Yeah, about. you don't want to watch someone getting their home foreclosed on. That's not right. You we already on. know that guy. I mean, that's part of my problem with reality shows, is I know dirtbags and people who have made terrible life choices. So it's hard to watch this stuff. But it is fascinating to hear about it secondhand, because here's my second question about you, the viewer. Now, you, the viewer, do you have, and because of the podcast, uh, Lisa Trigger, do you think that there are a lot of, do you tend to lean towards people are bad or people are good? Does it, does this give you uh, just sort of a natural defense against people? And then you still live your life thinking most people are good? Or do you live your life uh, thinking most people are bad and it's hard to get up in the morning? <laughs> That's so interesting. Um, Cause it's a particular group of people that like want to be on. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a super th- specific person type, right? There's just different categories. There is a category of housewife that is straight up Trumpy, race like they are bad people they can't take accountability they don't apologize like they only care about themselves so like there are horrible people on the show oh and the husbands oh my god we haven't even touched on the husbands like (laughs) some of these men horrible because they are women in their like 40s 50s and so like a lot of them still hold on to very traditional beliefs like you know, you have to have a child to be valuable. You, oh, I can keep a man. And it's like, sure, but that man sucks. Like it's better to be single than with that man. Um, Cause right now I can't believe I didn't mention Miami, which is killing it so hard. And there's a connection to one of the, she's not on anymore, but the first season of Miami, there was a man who was who William Kennedy. Is that the nephew that got accused of rape? I think it's one of the Kennedys for sure. We covered this on the crime in the podcast. I think it was him. So William Kennedy's lawyer ended up marrying one of the jurors. And that juror was on the Real Housewives of Miami. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) That's not that's not okay. That's all kinds of that's that's all kinds of. Hey, don't do that. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, but so in Miami, like one of the men, like so, he's a plastic surgeon, super rich. He married a young cutie playboy girl. Cuts to fourteen years later, like this, he goes, "Get out of my house! I don't fucking like you." Starts bringing his mistress around the kids, and is just like, "Get away from me!" And this girl's been with him since she was like twenty two. Doesn't have family. Is cry. It's like I-, I don't know what to do. Lenny is my life, and Lenny's like, "You're get away. You mean right? Nothing you're too to old." Me. After right. fourteen years of marriage, you mean nothing to me. Like, wow, it's the men are really bad people. Um, I think a lot right. of the so women- that is that the pattern? The pattern is that whether or not the women are horrible monsters uh, or if they're just dumb or if they're just like narcissistic, wanting attention, kind of childrenish. like they all sound like varying degrees of children. Right. Yes. Yes. Where they're just like they're either like mine, mine, mine or. I'm the victim of all of these things. You can't make me or um, look at me. (laughs) 
But I mean, we it's love one of those, the look at me's. We love the, the look, look at me's. The look at me seemed the nicest of the Sonia, lot. Sonia, Sonia Morgan. She used to be married to a Chase Bank Morgan, like of the Morgan okay. family. A JP Morgan, yes. One of those. Um, mm-hmm. And so, he, you know, he left her, of course. Um, and she's, but she's like drunk. She gets her pussy out and she wants to have a good time. Like, it's really, <laughs> it's really but she does mess up stuff too. You know, you touched on something that I forgot that's so insight. It, they are dumb. There's a lot of dumb. You are correct. Okay. So there's, I mean, there's mean and they're not dumb. They're just, I mean, they may not be particularly smart, but they're, they're like street, like focused. Like the meanness is so focused that about me, 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 me. And then there's dumb. It should be about me, but he's so cruel. And they just let it happen. So they're just victim me, me, you know, dumb. And then there's look at me. And, and, and the then, look at me yeah. is get fucked over because there's a couple New Jersey housewives, like new mm-hmm. ones this season. And they're excited to be there. But the, the the villains that have been there for years know how to manipulate. So they'll set right. you up and they'll make you go confront someone and cause problems and sit there and be like, what? I didn't do it. So that's the thing. Like everyone in the fandom is different too. Like the villains bother me. I don't like watching villains. I don't like watching people that cannot apologize and like see outside of themselves. There are other people who respect that because that's what keeps it all going. And they love the villains. And like Lisa Vanderpump was a villain that like she produced a lot and (laughs) she would like set people up and do all this stuff but she's a coward and her for her final reunion she quit and left and didn't come to the reunion so. oh okay because she couldn't face everybody she had screwed over yeah because she can't um, admit that she lied and that's that's a tough thing it's so so i was, so, I was seeing something my mother-in-law was watching i think the view and it was <laughs> and it was just about how the the Oh, no, it wasn't. It was last night. John Fugel saying I did a, a radio thing for Sirius, but it was this the 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 there's no admission of of guilt. And what guys like knob job, right? Donald Trump, like like what that guy does for mean and stupid people is that he makes it OK to be mean and stupid. Like he has no aspirations to be a good person No, And he's like, OK, I'm a terrible person watch what else I get away with. And so it kind of justifies those people who don't want to make any effort to become better people. And yet he also claims to be like the higher ground, like this moral high ground. And you're like, but that's actually, you're a, you're an idiot and a monster and disgusting. And he's like, and I get away with it, but I am the best. And I am, I, I mean, look at America. And you're like, Get America's name out of your filthy mouth. Anyway, so uh, I have digressed. But I mean, but the thing is, is it feels like sometimes with the reality shows is that it also encourages that sort of attitude where you're just like, look at the villain, the villain, an unapologetically um, petty thief and dirtbag who um, who doesn't get better. I mean, are there people that have, is there an arc of this show where someone kind of like went, what am I doing? And then like got <laughs> off the show. Uh, have you ever seen off, that? People have gotten off not. the show or put on pause. That's the new phrase now. Um, maybe earlier yeah, they may season. not. They may not edit it. They may not edit it to somebody had an aha moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I always I, like, like there was a girl because now they do shows where it's called girls trip and like seven housewives from different franchises will just go on a week long trip. Okay. And that's really fun. And I want them to do one with the young, younger shows. And that's Vanderpump, Summer House, Winter House and Southern Charm. And like Below Deck is that might be your entry point is Below Deck. Below Deck is the yacht one, right? Where, yes. where it's it's about the staff who works on a yacht. And then the I've tried to watch sh- that. Oh, that didn't catch you. <laughs> no, I um, for it literally, I don't know what I'm watching, but it's not that. You know what it is? I I think I was born about 55, 60 years old because uh, I'm finally starting to come into the fact that I like shows and I always have that are that are dumb. I mean, everybody likes something that's dumb, but the dumb ones that I like are feel kind of older. <laughs> like, what? like what is the dumb? Like when show? I was like, I always liked like uh, Alton Brown. 
And so now I like America's test kitchen, right? Oh, like it's a cooking, it's like a, in a garden. I like those back in the late nineties when I was in my early thirties. And now I'm like, no, I would also watch in a garden, but it's also, I like cook's country. Uh, I like Stanley Tucci wandering around. Wait, Italy. But have you ever gotten into top chef? I, I liked top chef for a while. And I liked, um, I never liked chopped because I was like, no, nobody's yeah. doing that. No, 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 nobody has to use a can of sardines and peanut butter and you have done something terrible to them. Leave the graham crackers away. And I mean, it's just like a terrible box of crap. And so, I mean, one of the things about reality show that is fascinating is the, because they do, they have crafted something, right? They're creating, like when I went out for Last Comic Standing, it was after they did the house. They only did the house like two years in a row because it was too expensive. Oh, wow. uh, it's almost free, by the way, to do reality shows. <laughs> so I like that they thought it was too expensive. Um, so I think, um, and I never, I never had the, what I was told was that the comedy was fine, obviously. Uh, I do stand-up comedy for a living. Uh, but the, uh, But there wasn't enough drama. And they were uh, like one, I did three seasons where I, where I tried out and one year they were like, well, would you want to be like the mother nurturing person? And I was like, sure, I'll do whatever you want. And they're like, yeah, you're too sane. And I was like, yeah, I just got out of therapy. I, uh, I, I had to be honest with an, a stranger in a room and then beat up a pillow for hours on end. And, uh, and I, it turns out I came through it with a, with a sense of self. <laughs> So I never got to be on the show. Would you ever want to be on the shows? Um, like as a fun moment, I've applied to be on Survivor. Like I would definitely try to do that, I think. But it is so interesting. You're like, are there arcs or people that there are characters that are like you? So Eileen Davidson was on the Beverly Hills and she's a soap opera actress. So maybe okay. you might have like heard about her through your mom or something. But she wanted a reason with these women. And it just oh, like, wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> she just was like, okay, well, she lied. Why don't we get together and have a chat? And then some people would just throw drinks at her. Like, they, like she kept, <laughs> you know, she hosted a little poker game and it ended up in like shoving violence, pizza on the floor. And she was just like, <laughs> like, so she tried so hard to be normal and it didn't work. And so she's no longer on the show, but she's one of well, my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> That's she hilarious. Is, she has one of my favorite lines. Um, there was like a fight in Amsterdam and I just like, I'm obsessed with her. Um, but then some people are just boring. Like you need someone that some people are boring or they're right, you too need meek. drama. Yeah. 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 You need. Yeah. Or like Carol. What Rashford. was, what was her great, what was Eileen's great line though? So Kim Richards is Kyle Richards' um, sister, and they're they're you have all of these people in your brain box, all of their names and their jobs. And their, this is the greatest dork forest, <laughs> so great. By the way, it's Lisa Trigger. By the way, it's at Glitter Cheese. Uh, it's an SUV, SVU, SUV. It's an SVU uh, podcast. No, called, this is a um, gift for me because that's messed up. All I've been thinking about is Vanderpump Rules since March, and it just ended. Okay, and I'm like wait, what do I do now? Like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like me and my friends, we had a, a re, like the third part of the reunion. We had a little party. We had games based on references. We made um, foods and drinks from the show. Like, and then it's like, oh, what now? So this is like a true gift. Um, so the line, is, so Kim Richards and Kyle Richards are Paris Hilton's neat, um, aunts. Okay. And they're sisters with Kathy Hilton and they were child okay. actors. So if you watch like return to Witch mountain and stuff like that, they're like those kinds of women. Okay. And Kim, unfortunately had severe alcohol and drug problems throughout the show. I think maybe taken advantage of in a little way, but like true addiction. Um, and they were in a fight in Amsterdam <laughs> fighting and Kim is yelling at, at Lisa Renna ended up breaking a glass. Like it was a wild fight, right. but at one point she looks at Eileen and goes, I don't even like you, you beast. And Eileen goes beast. How dare you? And I just like, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love her tone, but right. 
what else happens? Like Carol Radswell, she was married to a Kennedy, someone like that. And, you know, she was best friends with Carolyn Bissett and she was a journalist at ABC News and like dress school and was, uh, you know, her husband sadly passed um, from cancer. And like, she was too cool. She just like what she was just chic and too cool, but then the show got her. So that happens too. Or sometimes you enter as like cool, level headed, I'm above this. Right. And it sucks you in. And right. then there are right. people who could be, they just don't know what they're getting into. Like Bethany Frank, like some of these women will read you for filth. They are vicious. And if you're just crying, like some people just cannot handle it. Right. Which right. is they just cry. Yeah. Well, of course. Is there much swearing? Well, that's what's been awesome now with the Peacock. So now Bravo and Peacock are partners and everything on Peacock is uncensored. Oh. So that's been huge. That's been awesome because yeah, yeah. I, I hate Because then the you beeps. get to actually hear the, uh, you get to hear someone actually call somebody a fuck chop. And, uh, and I bet you there's, there's creative. Like, because the thing is, is, and I really do hope this is that all of these people that are on these shows and I can only call them actors. Um, I, I hope that they're having literally the time of their lives. Right. And like socking it away for retirement or something like I hope that they're having fun while they're also creating this drama. Like I know that there's drama and there's their feelings get hurt and they're shouting and there's all these things. But I hope in the like in the end. Like at the end of the day, not that they're still friends with those, like there, there are people that I worked with that I wouldn't, there was a woman that I worked with at this, at this office. We, I went off to lunch with her probably four times. And after that, I was like, I'm never going to lunch with that woman again. And it was because she never tipped. She always, she under tipped every time. And she always said, well, uh, well, she was kind of late or she'd come up with some like weird. And I said, I'm never because we all had to come up with the extra money, right? Because it was it was all on one bill and you pitched in, right? And so I was like, if Krista's going, I'm not going. It's just because she's a piece of shit. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. It's only costing me an extra two bucks every time I go, but it's two bucks that Krista should fucking pony up. And it's there's disgusting. a reality. Someone that doesn't want to tip is just like, and that's like zero tolerance for me. <laughs> Why are you going out? Pack a lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Pack a lunch. You, it'll save you even more money. You cheap <laughs> son of a bitch. Anyway. So I, I, I do hope like, are there other, are, are there shows like the reunion show kind of interests me too. In the fact that they haven't, what was it a reunion of, of just the last season going, we have this huge reveal. We're going to just do. Well, everyone runoff. gets reunions, but I want to touch on the happy part. Like okay. there are moments of the show where they go on a vacation or they go drinking and they just like have a night. And that is as a viewer, so fun to watch. I love when they're getting along, having fun, enjoying each other there for each other. But also like Miami is really good about this. No matter how much drama and vicious shit they say, they're there for each other. Like when okay. they found out about Lisa's husband, they're all on her. Like, what do you need? You know, they, yeah. if, if there's a death, if they're, you know, we, that's the, another thing. Okay. Was, we saw Vicky's find out her mom passed on the show. Oh, like wow. we really see their lives. And so yeah. they are there for each other at the end of the day. Like they truly come there. Obviously there's enemies that will never, but right. they do. They do love each other deep down. They're there for each other. And I love when they have party nights and are actually getting along and eating fried chicken in the middle of the night and, and doing truth time. or deer, dare and like skinny dipping. That's right. the best though. I really love that. That's cool. Yeah. I love the idea because I mean, whenever I hear about these shows, it's almost always the drama, not at this level. Well played uh, Lisa Traeger, uh, the detail, the names. I love it. Uh, but the, uh, no, but, <laughs> but I don't ever get to hear funny. about the happy stuff. No, yeah. whenever they go on vacation, it's always like, well, I just hope this trip to Ireland can just be fun and drama free. <laughs> and it's like, never. <laughs> It's never. Well, They're guess who hopeful. doesn't hope that? The producers. It's always the producers like, yeah. um, it's always like at my, I mean, it's at the Jersey, there was a fist fight at a baby's christening. <laughs> 
Anybody punch the baby? I hope not. No, no baby punch. <laughs> well, that was a big fight because I guess some of the children were unattended and it's like, you're a bad mother. You left your child unattended to get into a fist fight. And then that's a, that's a fight <laughs> because children are off limits, you know? Wow. Right. right. Children are off limits. And ma- and th- this is, these are almost all women, right? They're all women shows. A hundred percent. Except um, Summer House and Southern Charm and Winter House, there's men. And then the Jersey husbands are have such a nice friendship that they're actually they have their own like parts in it but that's the only franchise where we really see the husbands hanging out a lot beverly hills sometimes but the jersey house the house husbands are like good friends and they get drunk and wax each other's chests and like (laughs) they get gay it's like really fun that's awesome well well and the reunion i do want to just cover this so the reunion what happens is They all meet up because now they've watched the show. So you see what people said behind your back on the confessionals. You see the lies, you see certain things happen. And so the reunion is basically to like hash all of it out. Mm -hmm. And so then it's done. Um, Actually, Brian Moylan, he does vulture recaps of the housewife shows and he's an incredible writer. He wrote a book about the housewives and he brought this to my attention. Like the whole point of the reunion is to hash everything out. And then they usually start filming like a few weeks after the reunion airs. So then it's like, all the problems are solved. We've dealt with it. We've apologized. And now let's film with none of the last season. And that's why Brian Moylan for the Vanderpump, what was hard is they kept lying at the reunion about the cheating. Uh They continued to lie. And so, and then Raquel felt guilty or something else, but (laughs) she came and did her own one-on-one interview and revealed all the lies from the reunion. From those two guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my god but i'll tell you my favorite line so one of the girls lala goes you need to get mentally evaluated and raquel goes Mm. i am getting mentally evaluated don't worry and it's like that's not the own you think it is (laughs) heaven um but roxanne gay um actually loves the housewives And she and Gloria Steinem got into a little argument of whether it's feminist or not. And so for me too, the fact that Roxanne Gay is such a fan makes me more like, I do, I like her teachings about it. Because it is one of the few places where women over the age of 40 are working, making money on television as their true selves. And it's honest, like they're messy. They are, they don't, they're not always wearing makeup. Like it is one of the only places to really see women in their sixties in bikinis partying and like fucking people at a resort, you know, it's nice. (laughs) Right. It does. There is a certain amount of freedom in whatever is being learned from that. There is, it's real. It's at least it's women being not perfect. Right. Which, I mean, I was just talking about earlier, the, the justification of being uh, an asshole is out there too, but there's also the justification of not having to be perfect and getting to age and getting to, you know, you're like, people don't have their shit together when they're in their sixties. Some, some people are completely and entirely a mess and insist on a lot of plastic surgery and Botox and, and all the things that, just so that you're like, well, I just want to look 40. And you're like, mm. uh, if you could bend over really well, then you would really look 40. Uh, I mean, if you're still, like if you're still limber, uh, like I, like whenever my 86 year old dad picks something up, I'm like, Jesus, how could you even good for you, buddy. And, uh, cause you get real stiff as you get older. So, uh, I know I have to like stretch. I really, that's like my biggest thing where I'm like, Uh, my parents knock on wood are just like so active in their seventies and eighties now. And the way I live, I don't know if I'll be able to have that kind of. (laughs) Right. Well, you have to got to Got to stretch. That's what we're all trying to make sure that we remember to do. And, uh, and I have a joke about Pilates not being real. Pilates is the greatest physical therapy in the world. I, I retract my joke from Conan. Oh, it's hard. Uh, it, it isn't hard. This is the greatest thing about Pilates. If you get a one-on-one on that reformer, you're doing tiny actions that loosen up your, your joints and your limbs. And it, and you can build it up to, you know, to it strengthens all of your body, but the movements are so slow. 
you don't even know you're ex- I didn't even know I was exercising, Lisa. Are you kidding? I didn't you didn't feel know. a burn? I felt a little bit of a burn, but it was so slow. Uh, are you taking a class or are you doing idiot uh, one-on-ones? No, I tried to do like bar and pull. I have not worked out. I'm a really all or nothing fitness person. I've. Oh, I'm a nothing. I'm a complete nothing. We're a fitness person. Yeah. But I, when I'm in, I'm like, I'm boxing, I'm soul cycling, I'm this, I'm that. And like, then I got COVID like last what, Christmas or two Christmas. And then I just like fell apart and now right, it's right. like too hard to start again. And then it's like, at least do 10 minutes. I mean, the mental gymnastics of just like, just take a walk, you dumb bitch. <laughs> but, you know, I'm on my own journey with that as everyone. Else. Everybody's on their own journey. Uh, I've digressed. Uh, it's been an hour. Let me just tell you, <laughs> Rangers, uh, this has been a fascinating spiral down into. Do you think you're going to watch anything? Like, do you think like, did I maybe convince you to yeah. like get into one of the franchises or Vanderpump or watch the reunions? Well, here's the good thing is like with like I, Maria watches all this stuff. Bamford, when I go on the road with her and Wait. I think HGTV she loves like 90 day fiance and stuff or whatever the, the, she likes a lot of the love ones, but not the love and lockup ones. Okay. Uh, I did a love and lockup episode of the dork forest. And that sounded very inter- uh, but interesting. I'm also, but- I don't know if it's a snob, but to me, like Bravo is different from TLC. Like I think TLC oh, okay. reality shows are different. Right. They're, they're, they're different levels. So I think uh, Kill Martin and, okay. Yeah. And I think Kill Martin and Bamford are into TLC and HGTV. Yeah. Uh, you, but I think also Bravo. I think also Bravo. You're very, you seem to be a real brand uh, lady into Bravo. It is. And it really is. Sorry, I have it on mute right now. They're replaying it. It's like Vanderpump was sick. Like he's in this cover band and the two women are like dancing in the front. It's like sickening what he, the, it's diabolical to be such a liar. Um, But it is a connector. Like I have friends in England who watch this uh, Bravo, like anywhere you go, it's always like, do you yeah. watch Bravo? And then it's an instant. It's probably how like men feel with sports at times, or if you're like really into sports, right. like it really, I love the merch. I love the community. I have my group chats. Everyone in my life is watching. And it really is such a social thing for me too. That's so cool. Then, then I, then I completely, cause I think I go to a uh, different con sometimes little comic cons, not comic con though. I am you guys. In July, I am doing Mic Drop the week of Comic Con. The best on, club on the Friday Saturday. Have you been to Mic Drop? I love the club. The menu is amazing. It's designed so cool. They treat you so well. It's such That's, a good club. I'm, my first time. Uh, I'll be headlining. So if you nerds are going to Comic Con, uh, get a lift. Get the hell away from the convention center at night and come see a, a stand up show. Uh, I will write a Dune joke. Is that something? Will, will that help? <laughs> they anyway, have like so. a Nutella peanut, like fluffernutter panini, like okay. fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, the draw. There's a hell of a menu. And uh, the, in the green room, the table mm-hmm. is snacks inside of it. It's like a clear glass table with candy and like oh, chips. Oh, right, right. Oh, very exciting. And the hotel uh, they put you in has multiple pools and it's on the water. Like mic drop really is such a great time. Oh, that's so cool. I can't wait. Uh, and I'd really like to fill the fucking room. So if you know anybody going to Comic-Con or lives in San Diego, please make them come and see me. I think it's the 21st and 22nd. It's right after my goddamn birthday. So uh, a lot of swearing, a lot of swearing in this last minute. Uh, Lisa Trigger, uh, at Glitter Cheese. That's Messed Up, an SVU podcast. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. (laughs) And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?